You see, that's exactly what I mean. What a difference two or three days can make, even one day. In fact, it all started on that CPI Tuesday. I said, look, the open will be the high of day. I made a video pre-market, which I think I've never done. I said, you know, the market moved up. I said, no, nah, I don't believe it. In fact, I think that the, the high of day will be the open. And honestly, that's exactly what happened across all the, the assets. So I'm looking at the SPY. You look at any chart, it's the same thing. It's probably even worse on the NASDAQ. Look at that. And I, I went into detail, as I always do. I said, look, the NASDAQ in particular, we're going to open within this descending line. I knew that we would stay within. Now, I made the video a couple of minutes before the open, so I was pretty sure we weren't going to move too much higher. But anyway, whatever. You know, for the, for the NASDAQ, we stayed within descending. For the Dow, we, we reached the descending some time ago, but the Dow actually suffered the worst, I think, out of all the indices on that Tuesday. It just, it was ugly straight away. And it was a very bearish, engulfing candle, reversal, star, shooting star, whatever you want to call it, the Russell. So look at that, you know, just horrible. It, it never even went as high as its local recent high. So they all had their own resistance points. I go through it in my in my Tuesday video. I think the point is I'm trying to make today is what what a confirmation we've got now. Look at the Russell. Let me let me start very quickly with the spy. I just wanted that, that quick little introduction to review you know how important the last three days tuesday wednesday thursday have been uh combined i mean we've gone from oh my god new highs breakout to guaranteed breakdown the peak is in you know three days so and it's not as if they were crazy minus eight percent days they were minus two three percent days and that's what we needed i i knew that's what we needed that's what we got it all started with that tuesday so look US CPI, it, you know, we opened at the recent high, closed ugly, continuation the next day, even though it's FOMC day, I don't really care about the news, you know, because whatever the chart does, whatever the candle does, the news will, will excuse it. You'll have people coming in and say, oh, well, you know, uh, CPI was lower than expected, therefore, you know, um, the market moves higher because, but, you know, well, because uh, inflation is is lower than expected, therefore we don't have to raise rates, so it goes up. Okay, and if it was the opposite, there's an excuse for all scenarios. You know, if, if CPI was higher, you could say, um, you know, oh well, inflation up means stocks up, everything goes up. Maybe the the market is used to is now getting used to the idea that inflation means everything goes up, which actually should be the real narrative because uh, the the market should should wake up to the, the reality that the Fed can't do anything about inflation long term. So actually, I think everything should go up long term, especially gold and silver, which is why I'm in it. So the point is, you get the excuse later, but what counts is the immediate price action. And so I don't really care about news. I mean, obviously it matters because you get the immediate reaction and then that can affect the, the, the chart, you know, the technical. So you've got to respect it. But, you know, I, I do pay attention to fundamentals i believe in that fundamentally and anyway point is both count and to me um when it comes down to it news takes secondary position to chart and the chart sometimes knows about the news and and in my opinion the news is, is the excuse after the chart has done what it does so for me you know down we go today let's just talk about today so you know cpi was was horrible i mean it was initially looking good then it became horrible it was totally overbought here we needed to come down this whole area was a sell i said it for a while and we were there for a while that's why fomc you know again I'm not going to go into all the little nitty-gritty things that that pal said it was more hawkish than people thought and rates are going to be higher for longer i don't care what they say it's all garbage anyway you know they change their mind they stay vague and the point is he's going to keep rate in my opinion he's going to keep rates higher for longer than people think because he has to because if you don't beat inflation you basically go to hyperinflation as the end of civilization and i don't think they'll succeed anyway i think they will eventually have to you know raise the the inflation rate to three percent the minimum because it's going to be above two percent forever almost and they will probably get to lower it to four percent after a year of keeping the the rates high you know five percent and they'll crash the economy it's going to get horrible in 2023 so all this move up the dow jones looking like new highs forget it i said it's a selling opportunity 
And I think we're going to go all the way down here. I really do. And I know I can sound more bold and, and confident about that now that we're, we're down here. But, I, you know, I was just as confident up here. And I don't think it's going to be a, a, a simple move down. <laughs> we're going to have little bounces. So let's talk technicals now, finally. S&P, right? Closed lower than we've done for several days, you know, way below this ascending line. There's no support, in my opinion, until really this area here. Let's call it low 370s. I don't need to be too cute about it now. Um, to be honest, there's no obvious area. Yeah, maybe about where I'm where I'm saying. And there might be a little bit of a bounce before that because the other indices have their own little support zone and they sort of support each other. So you might find support being created before we get there. But I think we're getting there. And ultimately, we get down here. So I'm going to need to to have to add some more of these little targets because um because they're they're now relevant, right? The support zone. So let's just do that for now. Obviously, if we go below that, I think we we'll go all the way down. Let's look at the Nasdaq. I mean, this was probably one of the more horrible ones. Um, you know, it was weak on the way up and never took out its descending line. I don't see any support until here-ish. That's a little higher than the spy because it's the ascending. I wouldn't be surprised if we overshoot it. I should even make this target a bit bigger just because um, it's more likely to, to find support in both areas. So, you know, it doesn't matter. I'll just say this area. They may just undershoot the ascending support. It's just you've got these two candles down here. Anyway, about there, that can be done in one or two days also. Now, we're tomorrow we're Friday. We could move. A, I think we might move a little lower, but nothing crazy. And then next week, let's see. We might not get there in one or two trading days, but we're going down there. So S and P down there, Nasdaq down there, Dow Jones. Now this is the interesting one because it's got a long way down to go. Uh, and to me, there's no obvious support. I would actually not even, yeah, basically where, where the target is. I just see one or two days here. But really, the, the the Dow Jones will find support when the other indices find support. I think that's how I would trade the Dow Jones if I'm trading it, which I'm not. It's just, it's been quite a monster. So I'm going to leave the targets where they are. I think they're pretty accurate and I would judge it on the others. Russell 2000. Now look at that one. <laughs> That one's already gotten to its target here. Uh, the next one, yeah, well, you know, it depends what the others do. Can't have any difficulty with this one. Yeah, next one there, then there, low of day, uh, low of area. I, yeah, I mean, can we get there? Probably, yeah, we can get there. In fact, the Ross on the NASDAQ, again, looking very weak. So, yeah, we'll see. We could have. The Nasdaq all the way to 26350 and the Russell. These are the ones I'd be watching actually. Russell at 168. Definitely. Again, not, not by tomorrow, but sometime next week. That's what I'd call for. And the VIX, the VIX is a buy again, you know, because it needs to get back to 26-ish. I mean, we were there already, and the market's gone nothing but lower. So we should be back there. And, you know, this thing, I've said it's broken and, and don't trust it, but general barometer can be used for. It belongs there and it'll probably get there because there are some days where the VIX is up when the market is not down much or even when the market is up. And that's just because the VIX is, it, it, is, is underboard. So those are the markets. Basically, I'm patting myself on the back because so many balls, so many people just, you know, incapable of, of seeing how markets can go from bullish to bearish very quickly and and with the markets being as elevated as they were and and people forgetting you know zooming out not shaking their head and just remembering you know we're in a serious bear market and the markets rallied a lot even though we can keep looking like it's going to go higher no you know and it's not even healthy to have such a violent bounce so yeah, there's that. That's the general market. So let's look at interest rates. This one's a little harder. The one year I did say I see going all the way up again. And to be honest, the one year is ne never more than one or two days away from, from a big move up or down, in my opinion, up. So I think in one or two days we could be at new highs. And I saw um, 
what did I see today? I saw there was a 70% chance of the next rate increase being 75 basis points in it'd be February or something. I think it's February, not even January, but you know, everyone was thinking 50 or 25, and the slowdown is here. Now, nah, you know, Powell was pretty hawkish and and it yeah, I think um people need to understand rates are gonna stay high or higher for longer than you think. And he's gonna break the system because between inflation and the economy, inflation is a bigger and more important monster to slay. Because if, if inflation gets out of control, nothing matters. You know, nothing matters. So yeah, I expect the one year to move up to new highs. I expect the two year to move up and basically break out of this descending line. I'm waiting for it to break out of this descending line. <laughs> it's been acting as support, um, as resistance. And I think the one year will sort of drag it up, knock its head against this, and then break out. You know, I don't really think we're going to go down much lower. <clears throat> Five year. You know, we're finding support the last few days whilst the market's been going down. So I think rates are sort of done going lower. 10 year, you can find strong support down here. You know, look how many more. The, the, everything after the two year, the five year, the 10 year, and even the 30 year, the 30 year, you know, found support even higher, you could say. So this descending line is kind of being broken out of, in my opinion. I've seen lots of charts like this. They just sort of consolidate and then bam. So I think imminently you're going to have the longer uh the longer end of the yield curve just sort of, you know sort of take out its uh descending resistance and move up so i expect yields to to move up just like the dollar i expected it to uh to move up also out of its 103 support which i kind of call quite nice you remember yesterday and i think also the day before i I had to remind everyone why I found support here because when you zoom in, it's not obvious, but this was basically resistance, double top resistance we broke out of. And now we're retesting it. Totally standard technical uh, behavior. So, sorry, what am I doing here? Yeah, so, you know, just to zoom back in, that's why we have resistance around here. It used to be, sorry, that's why we have support around here. It used to be resistance. So dollar for me, finding support 103. Just like yields, I expect it to test the descending, break out of it, and move back up. So we're going to see old school patterns come back now. We're going to see the markets going down. We're going to see the dollar going up. We're going to see interest rates going up. We're going to see commodities, which I will move to now. I'm not going to look at FX because I can tell this video is already a bit too long. I like to keep it shorter now. But today I went on a bit of a rant in the, at the beginning. So gold and silver, right, looked very good. This one I nailed, which is important to me because... This is the one I'm trading. I'm trading GDX, GDXJ. I sold a lot on the way up. And I was, you know, I was pretty adamant that that, that was going to be the correct call. I do not want to sell too much of my gold and silver related equities. And then once you go all the way up, and then I make much less than I than I thought I would. That would have been horrible. Um, so I'm very happy to see a destructive day like today. And, you know, just remember today was because I'm making the, the video a bit later. So everything reset. But, you know, today was a minus three, three point five percent market day. Silver was down, I think, minus three percent at one point more, almost minus four percent. So it was a big down day across the board. Very important for me because here you can see, let's just look at gold now. Where we are now is the same. I mean, that price action just forgets all of this high this 1800 price action because we popped above now if you remember up here i called this high also i did i said gold's high will be when the market opens on tuesday with cpi report and that's what happened and after cpi report gold sorry not after cpi report once the market opened basically gold just moved lower <clears throat> because after cpi it moved up when the market opened it moved lower because everything came down and that's what I wanted to see. <laughs> and now it's just more continuation. In fact, I expected gold to be down here yesterday. Um, that being Wednesday, you know, after FOMC. I thought it was particularly strong and I was a bit worried. I thought, no, my God, don't tell me gold and silver is doing the one thing I've wanted it to do for so long, but not now, not now that I'm trading it a bit more aggressively, tactically. 
So anyway, gold went down. What do I think is going to happen? I think we're going to move down to here. I think as the market moves lower, as yields and the dollar move up, gold will take its traditional role of acting inverse to yields and the dollar. So as they go up, gold moves down. I think it goes down here. If it does move down here, then we're starting to look pretty weak, like we need to flush, and that will be the biggest buying opportunity. A lot of people will be buying gold and silver as it goes down here, even though people usually get scared. I think there's a lot of important, smart, institutional, central banks, countries buying, and they know how to read charts, and they also don't care about charts. That When they see it cheap and they know what's going on in the world, they buy seriously. So... I'll be buying a bit early. I'll be buying this and I'll be buying anything lower. Obviously, this will be the next support zone. I should actually start adding those in, you know, there, for example, and the next one, obviously, down here. I'll be seriously buying that. So that's gold, you know, very, very happy that it came down today because I've been selling this move up quite a bit and um, I need to buy back. To put simply, silver also, that was even yesterday, that was up. You know, yesterday it was up. I thought, no, oh my God, don't tell me silver's going to go all the way up here. I said I didn't think it would, but this is the next resistance. Thank God it didn't. Uh, this one is going to find a lot of support on the way down. So I'll be watching gold to find its support zones. But otherwise, you know, here's the first one. There's the next one. And there's the next one on the ascending. I think I'm going to have to really buy this one aggressively and maybe consider the chance that it never even moves down here to the ascending support so gold and silver finally looking like it's moving lower but they've been so strong lately and things going on geopolitics macro there's such buys that i don't think i should expect it to come all the way down here or get greedy to the point where i'm only going to buy down here there's a chance that it sort of starts to disconnect a bit from the markets because of everything else going on that I actually, I'm pretty much willing to buy it earlier than than any other asset. So plus I sold so much. So <laughs> I'm really eager to watch this come down to buy more. Those are my support zones for gold and silver. Let's look at the miners. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. You know, lost the, the ascending support markets generally close near the low of day but the gex gdxj closed at low of day so amazing for me i i mean this is how i'm trading gold and silver so ultimately this is what i'm really interested in, in getting uh obviously i was very worried of it going up but i nailed this one on the high of day i even sold a little bit on cpi day even though i'd already sold a lot i was so adamant when i saw the market at the open just just sell off i thought you know what what I said in the video is basically going to be true. Let me just, I closed a few little positions. Yeah, I know I had very little left. I just closed it and I trimmed some new months. I had too much of that anyway, still. And and another one, but it was such small stuff. Um, it was really more symbolic for me personally. So anyway, I think the next support zone is here. I don't need to move it. I've had these in place for a while. I don't think they change. And yeah, you could have one here, but let's just leave it here in general. I think a lot of things are lying here. You've got the descending, which normally is irrelevant once it's been breached out, but there's that one-time retest, so it becomes relevant once this descending line. The ascending is always relevant until it gets breached. And they converge here. Um, so for me, this is pretty... Plus you have this, you know, the breakout candle is also an area the breakout of the ascending so for me they all three converge around there so those are my two areas of of buying you could also say this line here 26 on gdx but whatever we don't have to be too cute about it i machine gun my way in anyway so and sometimes if i see support forming uh in an area that i didn't consider i'm, I'm not gonna not buy you know i'll just adapt accordingly and buy straight away GDXJ, very similar support, the ascending, and here the sort of the low of this consolidation after breakout. So let's see, but again, GDXJ closed, low of day, below the ascending, extremely bearish candle. Um, yeah, more bearish close than the, the markets. 
even though they were actually outperforming the markets during the day. I, I watched this thing very closely. <laughs> um, I don't spend the whole eight, 10 hours just sort of glued to the screen, but sometimes I do. So yeah, it was good to see it close very bearishly because that inc increases the chance of um, of more continuation. So how much of a move until next support zone? 5%, we can do that in one day. But I don't know how much of a move down we can expect on Friday because we've had three red days. You know, that's, that's quite a lot. Nothing goes up or down in a straight line, but I think it will go a little lower tomorrow since the close was a low of day. We basically would have kept going lower had the market not run out of time. So for me, we'll move a little lower. We might have a bit of a sideways down move tomorrow. Nothing crazy, but Monday, Tuesday, whatever. I don't know what the news is. I'll have to check, but... We'll get down here, 33 on the GDXJ, um, and I'll be buying. I'll be buying GDXJ at 33, even though I think the markets and will go down, the yields and the dollar will go up. I'm, you know, willing to buy a bit early because I think gold and silver are a bit special in this environment. So, ah, let's look at some special, uh, let's have some special guests in this one. And I'm sorry for the long video. Let's look at Bitcoin, first of all. And that's been outperforming, you could say, for a few days. It never took out 17,000. It never went below 17,000. Um, when the markets were moving low, and then the markets moved back up. And, you know, Bitcoin moved up nicely. So Bitcoin was pretty much an outperformer the last few days. But then finally, you know, this moved down on sorry, yeah, Tuesday, it did move down with, with everything else when CPI, after CPI came out, because CPI came out, everything went up, and then, sorry, after the market opened and the market went down, Bitcoin lost a bit of its, bit of its thrust, and then FOMC, it moved lower, it's still relatively strong, you can see it's still a green candle, but then, yes, I mean, today, Thursday, when everything moved down, Bitcoin moved down, and now it's looking... Like it's just following its ascending support. What do I think is going to happen? I think it will just go sideways and drop down, you know, you basically lose its support. And then, um, you know, we'll have a little bit of support here and then we'll move lower. And then we're in that little, oh my God, um, you know, we're at the final support, 15,000. And then the rest is just, momentum psychology and we flushed any lows but you know for this to happen the market's going to have to be flushing also i'm talking about nasdaq being at its uh you know lower setting support so but that's what i think is going to happen i don't think it's gonna i think what happened here is it just retested its old support and it acted as perfect resistance it's just that it happened to time in perfectly with the news and this is what happens so if someone was to look at bitcoin and i'm sure there are thousands of videos on it all these little YouTube geniuses, they'll say, um, oh, you know, the news did this. And yeah, okay, the news did that. But you zoom out, technically, what happened? It just tested previous, um, get rid of that. It just tested previous support. And it acted as resistance. Now we moved back down. So <laughs> that's what I think about Bitcoin. I think I'll just do, uh, do that, lose support, go sideways, and then back down to lower support. Let's look at some other special guests. Let's look at, Tesla, because Tesla, and you can see the destruction here for some of these big stocks. Tesla today was green. I don't think there was any news. I don't particularly care about the news. Um, Tesla's green because maybe it's just been a bit too red recently because it's just come all the way down. Remember, the markets are were testing their highs, and Tesla's just going down, down, down constantly. And I think it had a bit of a bounce. But I'm not, not really to talk about today, although today is you know impressive that it didn't it should be down maybe five six percent if you think about the other types of stocks that are down but yeah it lost its 180 support you can see that you know and i'm not just talking about here i'm talking about there there and also here and once we lost that it's kind of not got much support now this is tesla so it's not just gonna go down to me and i, I hate these little yellow circles because they 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 ruin everything when you zoom in but I think this gap fill here, I'm going to call it 138 because I zoomed in before. I think that's an area of support once the, the gap is filled. So I think 138 is a nice little target. Uh, where else could we see 
Let me just place that here. For the future. Get rid of this crap. Um, and then, you know, I don't really want to go too far below because, yeah, 100 definitely because you've got this area, but also psychologically 100. I think if Tesla is testing 100, it's going to be in the news all over the place. We'll probably do another video by then. But, yeah, I think 138 and then um, and then we'll see from there. Let me just move this to 100, yeah. But, you know, for now, it seems to have found a bit of relative strength, so it might not even get to 138. Let's see. But as the market comes down, which obviously I've shown I think is going to happen, it will get to 138. Let's look at, I mean, there's so many stocks I can do, but I know I've gone too far. And to be honest, the market is going to go down, so they'll all go down. To put it simply, uh, I did hear about, I haven't looked at the chart yet. Yeah, watch out for Apple. That's one of the very big boys like Tesla, but that hasn't come down yet. Watch out, you know, we lose 130 on Apple. We're going down. We're going to go down the way the other very big boys like Amazon, you know, have already come down 50%-ish. And Apple is one of the real sweethearts, and we could see Apple go to 100, you know? Where do you think the market's going to be then? So watch out. we got some of the very big boys that want to come down. Google's already come down quite a lot. Look at this descending line. So yeah, just I wanted to show Tesla. Also, Apple is quite interesting. Um, and finally, my absolute favorite uh Credit Suisse. My little genius. Look at this Credit Suisse. You know, we had that little bounce. Oh, a little bounce, very adorable. And in the last three days, especially the last two days, especially um FOMC Wednesday. And then continuation Thursday today, we are back at the absolute lows. <laughs> now, obviously, we have seen $3. $3, I already said this descending line here, this long term, this goes back a decade, but more, actually. More, yeah. Um, What does I go down to? It's 2009, yeah, so we're talking 13 years or whatever it is. This is serious support. Now, it's not too accurate, but no, it is. It is. This is serious support. If we and look where we are there, you know, that's how minuscule that bounce is. That's how big the problem is. If Credit Suisse loses $3, which could happen tomorrow, and this is just a black swan for me. If we close below $3, which could happen tomorrow, what's that, 7 $0.08, cents, 2 3%? No problem. We could have a real flush. We could just go see it go from, you know, let's say, 297 where it closes tomorrow or something, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. We could see it go from high twos to, to two, then one, then 60 cents. That thing, that, that moved lower just, that happens quickly. And that could bring about, this is Credit Suisse, this could bring about like mass domino bank failure and, and you know the Swiss National Bank does it stop hiking rates? Is it too late? You know what if you if you hike rates from fifty to twenty five, or if you stop, you do a pause, or even if you do QE, can you even save Credit Suisse? You'd have to directly give Credit Suisse money, and I'm sure there are all these backroom deals and swaps going on. <laughs> You've probably read the the reports where the Fed secretly just basically sends money over to these foreign banks it's unbelievable the stuff they do basically taxpayer like american farmers bailing out swiss bankers you know ultimately that's the type of secret transactions that go on through inflation and money printing but anyway the point is watch out for credit suisse you know that's something i say all the time but look at it look where we are you know when i zoom out this is nothing this is the same price having credit suisse at 360 or three it's the same thing so and look the close today and look where the market's going to go where i think the market's going to go down a lot more down so credit suisse is a big bank you know if credit suisse goes bankrupt i don't think there'll be no other contagion effect so i'm not going to do any more stocks everything's red it's beautiful um i'll do another video tomorrow uh unfortunately this one went on a bit too long so i'll end it very abruptly I hope you didn't get destroyed out there. I hope you took profits, trimmed your positions, and didn't get overtaken by the hype. 
in the last couple of days with with the news and respected maybe what seemed to me to be a bit of a high and a bit of a top in the market so do another video tomorrow otherwise good luck tomorrow